Hey guys, these are the questions we'll be looking at today. Um, all excellence questions from 2015, day two. Okay, so guys, the first question uh, that we're looking here is um, basically, again, I'm, all I'm looking at is just excellence questions. Um, so with this question, you've got 21 adults that are going to the movies. Uh, the cost is $14 for people under age 65 and $10 for people age 65 or over. All right. So the first idea is coming up with some sort of variables. Now, I might actually, I'm going to use in this case, for people under 65 as the letter U. And for people age 65 or over, I'm going to use, oh God, zero. Can get confused with zero. Okay, I'll just use O for now. All right. Over. So that's above. Or maybe I'll use above. 65 or ab above. So that's an A. I don't, I don't want to use O and then get confused with the number, that's all. So, the number of people number of people under age 65 is U. So, I'm just going to put that as number of uh, people under 65. And A equals number of people above 65. Okay? So, we've got 21 people going to the movies. So we've got U plus A equals 21. And then the second one is $14 for people under age 60, 65. So it's 14 times the number of under pe people under 65 plus $10 times the number of people over 65. And all that is equal to 258. So when you get this point here, um, this is, I think if you, if you form one equation, you are looking at your basic achieved grade right there, okay? And I say this to everyone, even that is not in the tutorial here, is that, you know, just try and get into the habit of writing equations. So once you get to this part, be very careful which variable you want to eliminate. Because, yes, like a lot of people just go straight away, I'm going to eliminate, um, I'm going to eliminate you. But that means you have to multiply the whole equation by 14. Okay, 21 times 14. Some people might find it easy, some people might find it difficult. But if I look at it in this case, there's a 10 there, and I, and I think... Getting, multiplying something by 10 is a lot more easier. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 10. So what I have is, I'm going to write the bottom one first, 14u plus 10a equals 258. And then the top one, 10 times u is 10u plus 10 times a is 10a. And 10 times 210 is, sorry, 21 is 210. So from here, I can now subtract it. And I've got 4u equals uh, 58 minus 10 is 48, okay? Which means we can say that u equals 48 divided by 4, so u is equal to 12. Now, the question itself is asking you how many adults in the, uh, in the group are age 65 or over. So that means you got to actually figure out what a is. So just substitute it back into the equation. So you got u plus a equals 21, 12 plus a equals 21, a is 21 minus 12, which means you have uh, nine people in that group that were adults over 65 years old. So in terms of grades for this question, um, if you had find this part right here, which was excellence, and just one variable eliminated and solved, you're looking at finding one answer as a merit. Okay. Questions on this one? It's fairly straightforward, isn't it? After a while, you do a few of these. Lovely feedback. Okay, so that was the first one. Let's go to the next one. Now, this one last week, um, I, I know I went through this last week, and um, you know I think some of these questions are just such a pain. And for me, this this was one of those questions that was a pain. But for me, I found it easier drawing it, um, drawing what, what it'll look like, and then kind of trying to understand how to actually solve this, all right? So what I'm going to do here is, first off, I'm going to just kind of draw a couple of things first, and then I'll explain to you how this um, whole equation starts coming into play. We basically got these two people. I don't even know how to say their first name. Does anybody know? Yunuku? You, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yunuku, but um, let's just call Mr. Yu and Tom lives 15 kilometers from each other. What that means is, if this is Mr. Yu's house, uh, Tom's house, the distance here 
is 15 kilometers from each other okay so you can actually and i know looking at this it doesn't make sense but imagine this like uh imagine uh, mr yu's house at um, as zero like zero point okay then tom's house is going to be 15 kilometers away from it so this distance from here to here is 15 kilometers all right so what you can then say is your first equation if you take u plus t t is tom which is the number of the distance that he's living away from yunuku that's equal to 15 kilometers all right that, and i think that's the one that people find the hardest to um, work with but you know like you can see that no matter how, which direction that um wherever tom lives i mean it could be li living in um, you know going towards the right or going towards the left it really doesn't matter it's always going to be 15 kilometers so you can say the distance from his house plus the distance from tom's house will always be 15 kilometers so that's what that u plus t equals 15 is now the second equation or even if you don't have the equation what you could have is you can have a look at it like this you basically got yumuku's yumuku yunuku's oh my god i'm gonna have problems with that name u and t's house there all right so it says u skateboards 12 kilometers so he goes so 12 kilometers say because in the same time we don't know what that time is this guy goes 18 kilometers does that make sense from can you guys see what that means by like uh tom rides his bike in the same time as tom rides his bike 18 kilometers so you want to write this as in terms of um u and t let me just try so what you want to do is if this guy goes 12 u goes 12 t goes 18 if u goes 24 t goes 36 so you're trying to find a relationship between u and t in terms of the distance they travel all right and if you look at these numbers so you're looking at what number am i multiplying by 12 to get to 18 and what number am i multiplying by 24 to get to 36 now you might not actually see see the pattern straight away but if i actually look at this i can i can write this as this box is equal to 18 divided by 12 and this side the box equals 36 divided by 24. now i know that some people don't know your times table for 24 or 12 but there is another way of doing this because 18 can be written as 6 times 3 and 12 can be written as 6 times 2. So what you notice is six and six disappear you have three over two so it's one and a half let's try that with the 36 and 24. 36 and 24 you can write it as uh what can we do what can we do 12 times three and 12 times two and again 12 and 12 cancels so the number that's going to go inside these boxes is going to be 1.5 so in other words i can say t is going to equal 1.5 u because whatever distance Mr. U travels, I got to multiply it by one and a half to get Tom's distance. Okay, and I think that that's probably the hardest part of this question because the rest of it it just becomes a breeze after that. Okay, because the rest of it, um, all you're doing is um, substituting and solving. So grades, uh, this getting one of these equations is achieved, but working out following that. So because we have u plus t equals 1.15, uh, then we can replace t with 1.5 u. So u plus 1.5 u equals 15, and we have 2.5 u equals 15. Divide both sides by 2.5, and you get u equals 6. Is that all right? So we got to answer the question the question asks actually if they both leave home at the same time and travel towards each other how far from you use house will they meet and that's just given us it's six now does it actually work out have a look at this so if we take um, u and t so w this answer is telling us that for six kilometers from um, unuku's house they meet so that means he's traveled six kilometers if he goes six times 1.5 you actually get nine kilometers 
And you can see that if Tom travels this way, he would have actually traveled 9 kilometers. And 9 plus 6 is 15 kilometers, so that just matches the, that original problem of those two guys living 15 kilometers away from each other. Is that all right? And that's, that, that's it for this question, guys. So excellence, if you get to this part here, uh, if you get for merit, I think somewhere here, combining it into one equation, yeah, that's what you're looking at for excellence in this. Um, in terms of this type of question appearing uh, in the exam, I don't know what it is. I mean, they just keep finding new ways to torture you guys. So, but yeah, just enough practice, and I think you you will you will have enough to get through this. Okay, so we go to the next question. All right, so we had a, a look at a similar question like this last week. But the constant was the one that we were trying to figure out, but this time we're trying to figure out the coefficient of x. So we're try this person is trying to find the value of b so that it only has one solution. Now, remember from last week, I said that if you want to have one solution, your quadratic, whatever your quadratic is, uh, in this case is x squared plus bx plus 16, it has to, if you want to have one solution, it has to be a perfect square. All right, a perfect square is going to give you one solution because remember, um, one solution means I need to go x plus whatever the question mark is times x plus whatever the question mark is equal to zero. Now, the important thing to see here is the number here right now. This is 16. Okay, so you got to think about it. What is square root of 16? Four. So then I know that these two numbers here is going to be four. So if I write x squared plus bx plus 16 as x plus 4 squared, then it's going to have one solution. Yeah? That means if I expand this side, x squared plus bx plus 16 on one side, and if I expand the right-hand side, I'm going to get x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then I can just say, therefore, b is equal to 8. Is that enough? Has anybody else got a different answer? Come on, somebody must have a different answer. I want to show you guys one more thing. Watch this. When you take square root of 16, right? Everyone said the answer was square root of, um, square root of 16 is positive 4. But remember, two negative numbers also when multiplied become a positive number. So square root of 16 could not only be positive 4, but it also can be negative 4. Which means this equation that you have here, x squared plus bx plus 16, could also equal x minus 4 squared. And now if we expand that, x squared plus bx plus 16, and we expand this, we're going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. So you've got the second case that's happening where b is also equal to minus 8. So B actually has two answers. It could be 8 or negative 8. And when you put 8 or negative 8, it's going to give you one solution here. Okay? Now, I've actually, uh, I actually spoke about this. But for you guys, you might just need to write a few sentences about it. All right? So you must say something along the lines of, uh, for one solution... Just trying to see. One solution, it has to be a perfect square or something along that lines. There we go. And then prove your answer after that. Point. Okay, so with the grades, value of constant found and the equation solved. Um, Oh, we haven't actually found the equation solved. Oh, wow. Actually, no, that's only one part. We didn't actually do this part here. User, find the value of B, we did. But we didn't actually find the solution to the equation. So we need to do that. Uh, that's not that bad because you can just do it. I'm just going to do it at the bottom here, guys. Sorry, I, I messed up the space. So when you have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0, 
So you have x plus 4 squared equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to minus 4. That's one solution. Oh, thanks, mate. The second one is x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. So you got x minus 4 squared equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to positive 4. So that's the solution to the equation, which, see, I mean, so easy to actually miss out on a uh, little part of the question. I didn't even read it. So thank you. So in terms of grades, volume of constant found and, um, sorry, value of constant found and equation solved. So you're looking at excellence for showing this, 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 and this thing there. So you're pretty much showing four things there for excellence. Uh, for merit, uh, da, 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 no need for possible. Yeah, so what we did before, you know how we left the answer at just B equals minus 8 and 8? That would be a merit. Merit is like stopping here and not doing anything further beyond it. For achieved, if you do something along the lines of this, you're looking at an achieved. Bob? When you come out from the two equations, or the one you just on? Um, good question. Let me just check the solution. What they got? Value of constant found in the equation. So the solution becomes no. I think you have to find both. You can't just find one because there is actually two solutions for B. So that, and I think that's where they're going back to this part here, the square root of 16 part. You need to understand that when you take a square root of a number, you get plus or minus as one of the, uh, as the two answers. Okay, should we go to the next one? Okay, so we've got another set of simultaneous equations here. Uh, what do we got? Marina and Virumu have a job painting uncle's fans. Pays Marina 20 bucks an hour. Virumu is paid $2 less per hour than Marina. So I think that's the first thing I want to put. Virumu gets paid $18. Marina works three times as long as Virumu. Together, they earn a total of 156 So our first equation should be, I'm going to put M as the number of hours Marina worked. W as the number of hours Vermu worked. So we've got 20M plus 18W equals 156. All right. Basically, that one line gets you your first achieved mark. Now, the second equation is the key part is looking at this. The best way, as I said last week, and I'll say it again, is that make a table. Right, make a little table and see if you can create an equation. Now it says Marina works three times as long as Virumu. So um, I think this one should be all right, but we're just going to put it down here anyway and I'll show you what it looks like. So if Virumu works one hour, Marina works three. It works two, it's six. You guys agree? Works three, it's nine. If Virumu works, and I said W is the number of hours he worked, so if I put this as W, this becomes... 3w. Okay, so that's my second equation. M equals 3w. And I and I get that from making this little little table. And I've been doing these questions for so long, like really long time, and I and I make mistakes with this because I always get confused with the with the language. For me, that's why I recommend people just just to put a table and actually come up with the equation from the table. Um, because you're most likely going to be right and you're understanding you understand it a lot more better as well because you can see how the numbers are working rather than how the words are working so once we get this part I'm going to substitute M so I got 20 times 3w plus 18w equals 156 so I have 60w plus 18w equals 156 and starting to work out really nicely because I've got 78 can be divided on both sides and I have W equals to 2 okay so just be careful like your automatic assumption is I'm gonna go work out what M is just have a look at the question and actually see whether you need to work out M or not because in the question it actually tells you asks you how much does Vermu earn so you don't really need to worry about finding out anything about Marina so you can just straight away go and say, well, Virumu earns 18W, therefore 18 times 2 is $36. So you just say, uh, Virumu earns 
$36 and you're done. You don't need to worry about solving simultaneous equations all the time. Sometimes you just need one answer and just you literally just need to answer the question. Every time you finish with one of these simultaneous questions, I will ask you this. Go back, read the question again and make sure you've answered the question. All right. I see a lot of people just working out simultaneous equations and leaving the answers and that's it. They're not actually reading the question. Like they have like little, little, little bits that they will ask you. Sometimes they ask you how much more did Marina earn than Verma? Like little silly questions like that. So please be careful. Make sure you check the answer uh, questions and then answer them. Okay. Do we have any questions on this one? We're good. Okay. So this is uh, the last one here that we're doing. Basically, oh, did I give you the for the previous question? If you solved it, you get excellence. If you, yeah, it's, I think it's easier to get excellence or achieved in that one, all right, in the previous question that we did. So you have to get the final answer for excellence. For merit, if you write all of them in one equation, it's a merit. But again, you kind of solve it, so it's not that difficult. Right, so with this question, we have, what do we got? Volume of a cylinder is given by this. Volume of a cone is this. Now, they're telling you the cylinder has the same height as a cone. Okay, same height as a cone. Sometimes it's worth drawing the picture if you want. All right, there's my cylinder. And then there's my cone. The height of both of them are the same. If the volume of the cylinder is four times that of the cone, give an expression for the ratio. So this is volume of cone. This is volume of cylinder. So can I actually say that the volume of the cylinder equals four times the volume of cone? Does that make sense what I've done there? Well, so all I've done is I've changed that sentence. If the volume of the cylinder is four times that of the cone, give an expression for the ratio of the radius of the cylinder to the radius to the cone. Now, if you look at this diagram, the only thing they say that's the same is the height. But I'm going to put down RC. Uh, no, I shouldn't use RC because that's the same mistake I did last week. Uh, cylinder, I'm going to use RY okay, for the cylinder. Or should we use capital? Okay, I'll use capital R. Capital R for the cylinder, little r as radius for the cone. Is that okay? So then all I have to do is just replace all these variables. Now volume of a cylinder is given here. That's V equals a pi R squared H. So I'm going to put that as pi. But I'm going to use capital R squared because that's the big R is for the cylinder. The height is the same. I can leave it as it is. On this side, I have volume of the cone. But it's four times the volume of cone, which is going to be pi over three, little r squared, and H. Okay? And from this point onwards, guys, it's just a matter of Canceling things out and solving it because uh, I see pi on both sides, so I can get rid of pi on both sides. I see h on both sides, which means I can get rid of h on both sides as well. Okay, so at this point, what I have is all I have is r squared equals 4 over 3 little r squared. Now, the question is asking you for an expression for the ratio of the radius of the cylinder to the radius of the cone. So the first thing we want to have is the radius of the cylinder was the big R. So we're trying to get an equation for the big R uh, in terms of the little r. That's just another way of saying this when you say for the ratio. All right. It's just writing R by itself, capital R by itself. So if I want to work out capital R by itself, I need to take square root. I got to take square root of this and square root of this, which means this could be written as R equals square root of 4R squared over 3. Now, because there's an R squared there, I can actually take the square root of R squared and it becomes R equals square root of 4 over 3 multiplied by R because I've actually taken um, square root of R squared and that's basically it but I need to make sure that um, well you guys need to make sure to mention what the big R is and what the little R is 
So it's somewhere I should have said capital R is radius of cylinder and little r is radius of cone. Okay, grades wise, that's your excellence. Uh, if you make like a silly mistake going from here to here, then you have a merit. Uh, the first part is your achieve right here. So just putting them equal to each other gets you an achieve. Any questions on that one? All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for coming and watching.